Introducing your main event of the evening, two out of three falls with a 60 minute time limit for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, ladies and gentlemen, former heavyweight champion and the challenger for the belt at 232 pounds from Umbarger, Texas, Terry Funk. And in the black corner, 245 pound world's heavyweight champion from Kansas City, Missouri, Harley Race. Two out of three falls, one hour time limit. You referee for this title match, Nick Kozak. The world's heavyweight title. This match is sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance. You see the referee, Nick Kozak, holding up the belt emblematic of the championship. Turns it over to the timekeeper, Mike Williams, which is traditional. And now we're ready for two out of three falls between Harley Race and Terry Funk. Funk lost the title to Harley Race in Toronto in February, and he believes that he is in condition to get that belt back. And of course, this is the thing that pervades his every thought and his every move. According to Funk, he is in the best shape of his career for this effort here against Harley Race. And Nick Kozak is making sure that both men understand exactly what he has um, has uh, in mind when he calls the men in the ropes. Nick has refereed tough ones before, but this promises to be as tough a test as a referee as he has ever had. He calls for the bell, and it is the start of a world title battle here in the Sam Houston Coliseum, and Harley Race knows that he is going to have to be at the peak of his career in order to still go out of the ring as champion tonight. So Funk moves in, but to say that he's the aggressor at this particular moment is a little early. But we can say that Harley Race is not exactly overconfident, nor is he over-endowed with eagerness to get in there and clash with Terry Funk. Now, Race has just returned from Japan, and he has had a few tough matches in the Orient, Singapore, Hong Kong, several place, several matches in uh, Japan itself, but he has not faced an opponent of Terry Funk's caliber, no matter where he has been, and both these men have a reputation for roughness, Funk, is the toughest and roughest member of the Funk family. He is proud of that fact. He says he wrestles the way his father told him wrestling should be done. So now, as Race examines Funk's style, he starts to move in just a little bit more. But notice Terry make that switch in the ropes. And oh, man! A slash across the throat and this is something that could quickly change race's complexion oh he caught him underneath the chin and up against the throat and race is above us here gasping for for breath so funk now has thrown the first wallop taken the first hold reverse armbar as he moves in there to clamp it on harley race to bear down on race to, to work against that elbow. You see Nick Kozak as he swings around there and takes careful note of everything that takes place. He's offering them the opportunity to capitulate even at this early stage of the game. But a good referee stays on top of the action that way. And you notice the arm bar, he held it straight. He kept the pressure back against the elbow. He jerked the arm back and forth, but he did not bend the elbow. He was working on that particular portion of it. Race the shoulders fairly close to the mat as um, 
as Funk keeps that grip solidly wrapped around there. And now as Funk is thinking of changing the application of, of the leverage. There's Race's face. You better take a quick look at it because it might change. Harley Race. And Terry Funk applies an arm stretch in a unique manner. I don't imagine I have ever seen somebody stand up on the man and then fall into it that way. But Funk has a way of inventing things as he goes along. And he also has a way of proving that Funk toughness in everything that he does. Kozak watching the shoulders, even though they're at this moment, the one of them is uh, considerably up off the mat. This can change, and Nick stays in there, and every man has his own style of refereeing. And Nick referees only occasionally. He competes as a wrestler. He has just come back from the uh, panhandle of Texas. He has been wrestling in Colorado, New Mexico, uh, and we uh, West Texas. He is in good shape, and that's one of the reasons he was picked by the NWA to handle this event and that, because of his condition. Well, again, he did exactly the same maneuver that he used before, and only this time he comes up with a hammerlock. He's working his legs around there, using his legs as a bar and doing exactly what he wanted to do, hooked that arm around his foot. Then as he fell back, he was able to take the arm along with him. And he was able to get a much greater fall and a much greater snap on that arm as he fell when his legs were holding it than he would have if, a, if his arm had been hanging on to the, uh, the grip. Hamelock and Half Nelson, Terry Funk, and he gets his leg under there to use it uh, for leverage, actually applying the half Nelson with his, with his leg. Hamelock is the grip. He could turn him right over here and get the pin, but Race is fighting against it. You see him drawing up his body there in order to avoid it, and he has managed now to get the hole concentrated only in his on his arm it's a double wrist lock and he is the man doing the crowding he came forward to push funk into the into the ropes now we got a pair of left uh, left hand is here that's ex exactly right and funk with a tremendous display of strength and a body slam and a he comes right back in for that arm but he held him up at arm's length Holy cow. From 240 pounds of Harley Race, heisted up there at arm's length and then slammed down to the deck. Notice Nick Kozak staying where he can see it, watching it closely, unobtrusive as a referee. And that's what makes the best referee when the match is over if you can't even remember who was doing it. Yet he has done a good job in remaining obscure but then remaining firm and effective terry funk working on the arms both arms of, of harley race race trying to fight that arm forward that left arm of his funk staying in behind and there he's got the one count but that's all and he moved with lightning like speed that time to crawl across there and get that arm again race is in trouble Harley Race. The ar his arm is held tightly, but he knows that if he makes a move that, that enables Funk to compound this hold, he's going to be in double trouble. The call is for the break. He's counting the three and the four and trying to get, but Terry is reluctant to break. He wanted to make sure that he got away from race cleanly without being uh, clobbered. Didn't quite make it. Crotch hold and Funk again. Oh, man. 
Terry Funk dropping in there, giving him a Charlie horse in the arm, working on that with a leg, uh, an arm scissor. And this crowd is buzzing, truly buzzing with the action, the solid action as they move into each other and neither man here backing away. But then it's Funk who is doing all the wrestling and Funk who is the guy who is piling up the points. Race's left arm still the target. Race's left arm still caught as he tries to maneuver around. He, he's, he may be going for the arm stretch again, but he uses his feet freely in here to keep Harley Race pinioned. And again, as he steps up on there, he's got an ear someplace underneath that. Oh! He just screwed that foot of his around there and and then went diving over the back of Harley Race in order to catch that left arm. He wasn't satisfied. He didn't want the right one. He wanted the left one. So he went over the back in order to grab it. Terry Funk's grip. Race drove his head in that time, right up against uh, Terry's temple. So Harley Race using that left arm, and believe me, that is the answer when you start to try to make that arm recover, is to use it, get the blood flowing, get the feeling back in it. And it's a side headlock for Harley Race, as Terry Funk is still trying to recover from the driving headbutt into the temple. And Terry reaches around, latches on to the left leg of Harley Race. He lifts up that left leg, trying to destroy Race's balance. But right now, Terry is not completely uh, capable of all of 100% of effort. That headbutt hit him right smack where he uh, where, where a man is weak, right up around that temple, I tell you, it can make a dingling out of you fast. So it's race with the side headlock. It's Funk trying to wrap him up. You see him here trying to get a cradle hold on him. He has raised his leg, but he has not yet completed the grip, but he does manage to get enough of it up there by holding on to race's arm and using it to apply a hold against race and keep him wrapped up and Terry trying to jerk his head uh, out of this vice-like grip and now fans again well they're shouting for Funk but Funk lost his chance no he went for something else he went to roll him back and to pin him for the three count so Terry underneath Harley Race in command with a with a side headlock You see the hand of referee Nick Kozak as he was looking over the hole, checking, make sure that it didn't go down underneath the throat in any manner. Fans again with Terry, letting him know it. And race as he leans in there, you can see that strange off-balance stance that he has as he leans into Terry Funk. But Funk is straightening out the arm, pulling his head slowly, maybe surely, down out of the grip. As the, at the moment, race only has part of the hold. He is only fairly well balanced. And now Funk has come up. It's, they're on equal terms. Terry Funk has his arm up on up on his, he has raised his arm up on his shoulder there <coughs> and is pulling it down but his head is free of the of the side headlock and as the arm is straightened out 
Funk is trying to get underneath. They are a tangle of arms. Each man's uh, fighting to maintain top leverage, and it's Terry who succeeds. An arm whip, and he comes up with a, an arm bar, but he loses it to a counter head scissor. So Race still working on the on the head, gets the head scissor. And, oh, oh. And he is not just going to apply the squeeze for the head scissor. As he raises that leg and drives it down there, he does it with a with a sure and solid blow. Harley Race, his advantage now rests in uh, weakening Terry Funk on working on the head that he had buzzing just a while ago with that headbutt into the temple. You see Nick Kozak, he's looking at the shoulders. He's the man who can see it. We, where we sit, we cannot. And Race tells referee Kozak to ask him Terry trying to literally pull his head out of there with forward motion if he possibly can. Harley Race, crooked head scissor. The underneath leg pulls up on the head. The, the leg on the right pushes down on the, on the body and on the, um, on the neck. And this kind of a grip makes you wish you had never become a wrestler in the first place. There is the twist. He jerks up on it. He pushes down with the with the right leg. And Terry Funk is trying to discourage Race's effort and turn it into perhaps a back body drop or an opportunity to snatch one of those legs for a toehold. He is bracing himself for the lift. And Race now has got a decision to make. He still has the hold, but what's he going to do with it? it? Funk trying to see how he can shake him loose or do something about it. It's still Harley Race's hold, strange enough, strangely enough. But the um, but Funk could be weakening. If he falls backward, he may have an advantage. He, he's he's no he sunk down on the canvas. As the, as the pressure from the head scissor just settled over him. Nick Kozak at the 20 minute mark. This match has a time limit of 60 minutes. Two out of three falls. We are still in the first fall. And Harley Race adds to the discomfort of Terry Funk. The fans try to add to Terry's enthusiasm for getting out of this grip. Funk, as he bounces around underneath, turns his head. That may relieve some of the pressure, but it also gives him an advantage, and he just used that advantage to stick his foot in Harley Race's face. We could see that perfectly from our side, but it's obscured by their bodies on your side of the, of the action. So, Funk, ah, Funk come over there with that southpaw clout of his and caught Harley Race alongside the jaw. And Race is looking around now for a way that he can apply this hold and still maintain an advantage. Now it's go Funk, go again as, as Harley Race applies more pressure to the side to the head scissor, Terry Funk starts to rise up again, and Terry Funk now is coming up faster than he did before, and lobby darn. To loose Latrec, he moves across that ring and uh, gets the referee to break the hold. Smart move by Terry. He got out without losing an ear, and The way he was holding the side of his head, he may not have gotten out without losing an ear. And that left-handed clobber by 
by Harley Race following up and taking advantage of the fact that he's got Terry Funk not in at his best and the champion working him over the world's heavyweight title is at stake and race oh man he threw that left but race is still standing and Funk knows that he's gonna have to lay that blow in there and he's not gonna blow him over with the wind of it Terry Funk the ex-world's heavyweight champion he lost the race in Toronto he is trying to regain it here in Houston. So Terry now, the more he stands there, the more he is going to be able to recover from this punishment around the head. And that twisting arm lock shifts the emphasis away from the head. It's Terry's left arm that's being held. He is a southpaw when he wallops and he come across with a backhanded clout from the left side with his right hand. And again, he slashes at him, slashes at him well enough to knock his head off and send it rolling up the aisle. And he, again, under the chin and under the whiskers and Harley Race is weakening, but he still has the arm, and this time Funk tried the headbutt. It didn't work. I think it backfired. I can't see Terry's face from here. Now, I, he decides to go back to the slash. They don't backfire as well. And he's trying to discourage Harley Race from keeping that grip on that left arm. Now, oh, the left came over. And the left came over with a solid clout. Race against the ropes. Funk, anxious to get Race out of the corner. He did not follow Harley into the corner, and for good reason. He was not going to be on the verge of getting trapped in there. There's the man who holds the world's heavyweight title. He brought it into the ring with him. He wants to carry it out. 25 minutes, 25 minutes. 25 minutes have gone by as race crowds into Terry Funk. And Kozak tries to break him. He tried for a straight blow from the shoulder, and Terry was with it. He let it go over his head and over his shoulder. Terry, as you see him maneuvering, is trying to, again, get back into 100% efficiency. He's after the spinning toe hold, and Race instantly counted it with that, um, with that driving foot. These fellows clash hard in the referee's hold. They come in there with, with solid forearm action, almost like a blow sometimes when they, when they come in and, and uh, come up, batter up against each other. The knee lift, and Harley Race this time goes for the figure four leg lock, and he's wrapped up. The shoulders are down, two. Oh, man, that was close. And Nick Kozak raises two fingers. Nick was right on top of the action. Funk doesn't argue with Kozak. He, I think, realized that it was a two count, but it was a close to a count. And if you're going to count, I guess maybe a two and a half count would even be a little bit closer. Funk in the ropes. Oh, man, how he knocked him from over his feet. Out of the ring, he just drove him through it. He just helped Terry Funk on his way. 
He just caught him in the way that he was going and drove him through. On the floor is Terry Funk, Harley Race, impatient to get up there and to, to get at him. And Funk landed with a tremendous crash on this concrete. He was driven through those ropes, but he, he was going in that direction himself. Funk up on the apron right here above us, and the champion trying to punish him on the, on the outside of the, of, of the ring, and Funk hanging on, but he wants to make it through there. Race again, eager and impatient. He knows that he has damaged Funk, and he wants to capitalize on it. A back body drop up in the air, straight up. Oh, man. He just dropped him from that height, and Funk came down from six feet up. The hold is an abdominal stretch. Referee Nick Kozak is giving the option to Terry Funk to quit or not to pursue. He can capitulate if he wants to. He has not yet indicated it. But after that fall on the floor and that crash on the canvas, this could be it. Harley Race has that arm solidly pinioned. He's got the leg uh, just tightly uh, set. He has the body twisted, and that, of course, is what an abdominal stretch does. And Terry is going to have to make a decision on this one way or the other. He did. He shook his head yes. The first fall. The first fall goes to still world's champion. This is only the first fall, however. So the first fall goes to the world's champion, Harley Race. We'll be back here in a moment for the second fall of this action from the Sam Houston Coliseum after we have this word from the studio. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Second and ball. Terry Funk gets up to his feet. He waved Nick Kozak away. When Nick Kozak came over and wanted to examine him, he pushed him aside, and Terry Funk indicated that he is ready for the second fall of this battle. 26 minutes and some seconds went by in the first fall. This is a 60-minute time limit match, and the referee now is warning, is stepping right in there to point out to Harley Race what he thinks happened. So Funk crowds into Race, and Kozak starts to crowd in between the two of them, notifying the two of them that it's time to break, and Funk is able to clobber the champion, but this body slam, oh, oh, what a fall. But I think that Harley Race, out of that fall, may have gotten the second fall because the he came up there with his head, the blow was right, squarely into Terry Funk. Whether it was fair or foul is gonna to have to be decided by the referee, but here is Harley Race now, working his points on Terry Funk. We could have a uh, submission fall here. He has won the first fall with the injury to Terry's back, and now as he uses this backbreaker, keeps his weight on the small of Terry Funk's back, he is pulling up on the chin, bending him in the middle. It may work, and it may not work. Funk's in trouble. The go Terry go is great for inspiration, but I want to tell you that what's happening to Terry Funk right now Makes him wish that he had somebody stuck up there in front of him where that he, who could take the punishment for him. And Funk now making use of what he can do, and he has come up with a side headlock. You see him squirming around here and trying his best to keep those arms wrapped tightly around the head of Harley Race. 
And Terry has gotten out of the back trouble. And he's into trouble again. No, he's not. There goes Terry with the backslide, and he turned the effort to go and get an abdominal stretch into a backslide. Here's the pile driver. Oh, man. That ought to shorten. Two, three. We've got a fall. Terry Funk with a hard driving a pile driver as I have ever seen. The second ball, the challenger, Terry Funk. He got Harley Race up there. He came down with Harley Race's head right smack in between his legs. He drove him down. He just didn't let him fall. He drove him down to the canvas and it winds up as a fall for Terry Funk, falls are even, and we'll be back here in a moment after we have this word from the studio. We start the bell for, or we hit the bell for the start of the third, the final, the deciding fall of this match. There are just uh, about 30 minutes left, less than 30 minutes left to bring this match to a conclusion. And each man has one fall. World's champion Harley Ray still trying to shake his head into place. And I swear he must be three inches shorter after that pile driver. So at the break, Harley Race made Terry Funk about three degrees hotter. And it could mean that Harley Race has decided that he's going to open up this fall to some swinging of fists and he may have made a mistake because the exchange between race and and funk is a pair uh, is between a pair of guys who can clout oh golly <laughs> those wallops laid in there in tremendous fashion and again and we've, we could have a fall on, on this as Funk moves in there and drops 235 pounds right into Holly Race. He's got the leg captured. He's got him wrapped up, but he didn't have him wrapped up enough. And Nick Kozak raises two fingers to indicate that that was what he counted, was two. So Harley Race just barely saved his bacon. Tory Funk trying now to carry the match to the race with a neck breaker. Oh, nicely done. You saw that twist in there. And Kozak right smack in position to, to get the count. And he raises those two fingers to indicate that he has only counted two. And Nick approves of the kick. Race would not approve of that kick. He could have knocked his head off. So Again, as Funk comes up, he drives that foot forward. Top man, there's one, and there's two. And again, Harley Race with that superhuman heave from underneath manages to roust his body out from underneath the weight of Terry Funk. And Funk is looking for a pile driver, or rather an atomic drop, I beg your pardon, atomic drop. And oh, he caught him. And Right, the tailbone coming down on Terry Funk's knee. There's the one, there's two, and there is... No, the legs over the rope. The legs are over the rope. Oh, those fans, some of them screamed, uh, thinking that the fall had been called, and the others saw the thing and just groaned. Or maybe it was Terry Funk that we heard groaning all the way. So Funk may be trying to set a trap for Harley Race. He was. He's going to go for the spinning toe hold, the Funk trademark, the one that that the Funk family has used to win most of his matches. His brother Dory Jr. does the same thing. And oh, Harley Race just clobbered Terry Funk right alongside the uh, the head, or alongside the jaw, high on the jaw, and. Terry back in again. Here's that spinning toe hold again. And Harley Race again driving blows at the face of, um, of Terry Funk. 
and Funk is feeling that eye of his. The last blow was the one I, I was able to see best. And Terry Funk is bleeding. He is bleeding just over his left eye as he is knocked down to the canvas. But he is after that leg. He is after the spinning toe hold. And he, Harley Race, the shoulder is up. But it's the fact that he could be uh, clobbered. Oh, the, as uh, Harley Race drives that fist in there. His knuckles are covered with blood. The face of Terry Funk, the, the left eye is, is covered with blood. The champion himself is having trouble rising up to his feet. That uh, right leg of his is in trouble and Terry Funk is bleeding and bleeding badly as, as he goes after the leg of, of Harley Race. The He's after it. He knows what he wants. The five-minute mark in this third and deciding fall. But Funk is bleeding all over the place. The knuckles of, of Harley Race are, are bloody from battering the face of, of, of Terry Funk. And the blood is running down Terry's face, into his mouth, his chin, uh, from above the eye. And Nick Kozak is concerned. And Race suffering from the... Uh, from the toll and and uh, now as the as the knee as he examines the eye of uh, look at funk just above the eye and and uh, Nick Kozak is trying to tell Terry Funk that he has a bad cut over the eye and he, I think he was on the verge that time of trying to stop, uh, going to stop the match when Terry talked him out of it. Tough spot for Terry Funk, bleeding badly, trying his best here to, to come out on top of this match. And bl a bloody mess. He's after that leg. He has found the leg. I don't think he can see it all out of that left eye. The, he dropped in high up on the, up on the thigh. He is bleeding all over the, the body of, of Harley Race and, and his own too. He is after the, the, uh, the leg again. He spins and, and I, I, I tell you, I haven't seen a man bleed like this in many and many a year, but Terry Funk is pouring it to the leg of world champion Harley Race and now Funk blocking that left hand that has been doing all the damage. Try, oh, he caught another one in the eye. And, and again, he caught another one in the eye. He's snatching him by the hair and, and crashing into there. And Race is covered with as much blood as uh, Funk, but it's all over Race's body. The blood is running down freely. And Terry Funk trying to force the, the issue, trying to force the world's champion into, uh, into submission. But he hasn't got his spinning toe hold on. He is uh, he is getting weak, I would say, from the the blood that he has he has lost and race on, on one side and and I think that referee Nick Kozak is we stopping need a doctor this, in ringside, this please. match. The referee Nick Kozak is calling for a doctor here at ringside, please. So world's champion Seven minutes, 39 Harley seconds. Race is the, the third ball in the still match. the world's champion. World Referee Nick Kozak has stopped the match because doctor, of the please come to ringside, blood please. on and the cut over the eye. And he, the, there, there is, there is Terry Funk. And we, as the crowd crowds around this ring, tell you that Harley Your Race has not yet risen to, to his feet. At ringside, please. The, they are calling for the doctor to come to ringside. But this match ends in the favor of world's heavyweight champion, Harley Race. Not a great deal of uh, victory in it, but he is still the world's heavyweight champion. We'll be back with you in a moment. First of all, I'd like to go ahead and say that I can't blame 
Nick Kozak for the decision that he made. But I consider myself not a normal human being, and especially whenever it's concerning the world's heavyweight championship. Now, I don't intend on being the Arnold Palmer of professional wrestling. In other words, I don't intend on being known as what I have done in the past or what I have accomplished in the past. And I was a National Wrestling Alliance World's Heavyweight Champion for over a year's time. And then I lost that championship match to Harley Race. Now that is very important to me, not to be remembered, but to be known as the best in my profession. The only way that I can possibly do that is to regain that world's heavyweight championship. Now I wrestled Harley Race in Houston, and in that match, I was busted open severely, and Nick Kozak made that decision that I talked about earlier to stop the match. And I don't blame him, but what did Harley Race have? Did he actually go ahead and bust me open with his bare fists, or did he have something in his hand? That's what I want to know. Now, I know that the most vulnerable part of the spinning toe hold is whenever you've got that hold on and you've got that man in a submission situation, that the most vulnerable point of you is your face because it's wide open. And he repeatedly hit me above the eye until he split me open. Nick Kozak felt that I might be, my career might be endangered. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I feel that I'm a tough enough man and a tough enough competitor that nobody is going to go ahead and stop me. And whenever I can taste victory that fast, know that I am that close to winning the world's heavyweight championship, there's nothing that would have kept me from coming back and getting back up again and again. I had Harley race, I could taste it. I knew that I had the world's championship back around my waist, but the referee called it and he stopped it. I went to the president of the National Wrestling Alliance, Eddie Graham. Eddie Graham said that he's known me for a long time and I got down pretty near on my knees and I begged him for a return match. And thanks to Paul Bosch putting his views on this uh, to the president of the National Wrestling Alliance, Eddie Graham, that now I am going to have a return match and there's one clause, one stipulation that I think is so great that it can't be stopped for any reason. I know that this is a dangerous type of match, but it's not too dangerous for me whenever you consider the stakes.